We're back together better than ever. Is that Bernica called? Internal affairs met, and you are back on active duty. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Mimi? Honey, is everything okay with your checkup? I mean, Dr. Martin didn't give you any bad news, did he? You know, Miss Anna, I about having Bianca as your maid of honor. We were talking about my color scheme. No, I know, but if you think in terms of the big picture, wouldn't an adult just be more appropriate? Let me ask you something, Kendra. Why is it you care whether or not Bianca is in my wedding? No, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not criticizing Bianca. I wouldn't do that. It's just she's kind of young. Wouldn't it be better if she was a flower girl or, or maybe a junior? Look, she's going to be by my side. You happen to be talking about my daughter. The most precious treasure of my life. She finally told me about the rape, Nikki, because she finally figured out that she was pregnant. Dear God. My little girl. Brutalized. Raped by a friend of a father's, no less a son. Barely in her teens and a mother. Mother? Are you saying that Erica actually had that baby? Yes, Nikki. That's exactly what I'm saying. children. Brought to you by Crest, the dentist's choice for fighting cavities. Crest with Floristat. A baby conceived in rape, Mona. Why didn't you... I had no choice. Oh, you always have a choice. Didn't you consider ending the pregnancy? Abortion was illegal. Anyway... By the time I found out, it was, it was too late to go to Europe for a safe abortion. Erica didn't begin showing until she was well into her fifth month. Wait, are you telling me that she was practically six months pregnant before you even noticed? I did my best. No, 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 Mona, look, I'm, I'm not judging you truly. I'm just in a state of shock. Well, I've known Erica ever since she was in high school. I uh, hard to believe all this happened to her, and I didn't know anything about it. You know, Nikki, I don't think she ever faced it, the, the rape or the pregnancy. Why didn't she tell her father? When she came back from California, she didn't tell me anything. I knew how badly he had disappointed her on her, on her birthday. I thought that, that accounted for the fact that she was so quiet. She must have gained weight. When I mentioned that, she said she was eating too much, but of course that was silly because even then, she ate like a bird. When did you talk to her about it? Yes, and, and she told me not to worry, that she was fine. And then one night I walked into the bathroom and she was having a shower. Oh. Well, that had to be a shock. I'm sorry, Mother. A child having a child. It broke my heart. When she finally tried to tell me about it and it poured out, she didn't even have the vocabulary to explain to me what had really happened to her. What did you do? I did the only thing I could do under the circumstances. I gave my grandchild away to save my daughter. When it comes to my daughter, Kendall, or any decision affecting Bianca in any way, I do not need your help or advice. 
I'm sorry. I I only want what's best for you. Well, then understand that I certainly know what's best for my little girl. Of course. I I, I always thought, well, the whole world will be watching your wedding. I mean, we are planning the biggest social event of the decade. People will fight for invitations. The press will be out in full force. All right, yes. So, so what? So, all eyes will be riveted on you and your family. And like I said before, Bianca's just so young. All that attention, plus the glare of the spotlight. The pressure? Exactly. And as the most important person in your wedding, not counting the bride and the groom, she'd be responsible for so much. I mean, you'd have to count on her for the ring, and your bouquet, your dress. And if she felt she'd let you down in any way, Bianca is not like that. All children hate letting down their mothers. Especially if they're lucky enough to have a mother like you, who just happens to be marrying the man of her dreams. I mean, it's going to be the most spectacular wedding since... since Prince Charles married the Princess of Wales. Think about it. It's going to be a room full of attendants, your grandest friends, your beloved family. I mean, they're all going to be there to witness your marriage. Kind of like when trumpets blare and candles will burn. Like what you'd expect from when King Arthur made Guinevere his queen. Kendall, if you insist on comparing Dimitri and me to royal marriages, then please compare us to royal marriages that worked. Please. I'm sorry. It, it's just... I think this of all weddings should be truly breathtaking. Regal. Yes, that goes without saying, of course. Now, look, please, uh, don't get me wrong. I like some of your ideas. The trumpet sounds great to me. In fact, I think the little silver trumpet with gold and white silk streamers and, and banners with, with our initials intertwined, E and D, and, and I think then a little simple, tasteful coronet embroidered in gold threads above that would be beautiful. Well, take note. No, no, of course. And I have some fabulous ideas of my own, okay? Like, okay. Like having a famous director direct the video. And what about using the same color scheme? Starting with, you know, the invitations are going all the way through the little lace bags that will fill with rice so that they can all throw them at you and Dimitri when you leave. I, I, I mean, Mr. Merrick. Look, uh, I want to take the subject of this hand, but the subject of this hand is my wedding gown. My gown and my daughter's gown. Bianca's gown. Do you understand that? The maid, of honor, and the bride. And that's that. And as royal and as majestic as this wedding is going to be, the only people who are going to be close to me are the people I love most on earth. Nothing would make me prouder than to have my daughter Bianca stand up for me. Is that clear? Well, good. I'll get that. No, I'll get that. That'll be that Valjean. She's going to have wonderful ideas for the wedding gown. And, and Bianca's gown now is stay put and, and take notes. I'm not going anywhere, Erica. You can count on that. I am so sorry, Dr. Santos. It's very embarrassing. Please forgive us, Mrs. Dillon. Anybody should be apologizing. It's my patience. It's very hard for a one-armed man to get his pants off under these jeans. Hey, what you're doing with your pants on in the first place is my question. Well, she insists I wear them in public, don't you, doll? You know, did you honestly think that you could sneak out of this hospital and not be missed? This is my fault, honestly, Doctor. I thought that I could get him back here without anybody noticing he was gone, but unfortunately, we fell asleep. <laughs> you know what? You're very lucky to have a wife who'll take the blame for you, because if you mm -hmm. remember correctly, it was just a couple of days ago that you promised to follow my orders to the letter. I was bad. You were stupid. You put this hospital and its staff in jeopardy. When you signed in, we took responsibility for your health and welfare. Oh, come Would you, on. Excuse me, but that included a treatment that was dependent on careful monitoring. Will you give me a break, Toots? Darling, look, before you lose your temper, let's remember that Dr. Santos is a wonderful neurologist. And you have ticked her off before, so why don't you just listen to what she says and try to act accordingly. I hear when she's right. Trevor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I put the hospital and the, and, and the, the medical staff at risk or Are whatever. Are you? Are you? Yeah, believe me, Doc. I wouldn't delay any, do anything to delay the healing of this thing. Now, that's why I'm sitting nice and snug as a bug in this little bed with my little blue dress on, ready to be the model patient. Right, doll? 
Following the rules is never his long suit. You did something to your hair. It's all nice and fluffy. It's something, right? Isn't it, doll? And this, and this lab coat, it's so clean and starchy. You look like a million bucks. You're trying to charm me? Hey, and you, you know, doctors, most people don't think they're human. But Nat and I, we know there's a heart beating somewhere under all that starch. So why don't we just forgive and forget, huh? So, when are you going to spring me from this fine medical establishment? Are you referring to the snake pit you mentioned earlier? Why don't we just get right to the point? Why don't you speed up the job and get me out of here already? You're gonna have to dream about it, Detective. I'm back on the force. Restored to active duty. What did the doctor say, Mimi? He said I'm in excellent condition. Great, great. Ain't nothing about exhaustion or taking any more time off from work, right? No, not a word. Good. I guess you're over the shock of the surprise party, huh? <laughs> We're doing just fine. Thank you. Th thanks, everybody. Terrence, the floor looks great. Th everything is great. Thank you hey, so hey. much for helping. Somebody fix this lady a soda over here. Now, we are going to wait on you hand and foot, okay? All right, now, come on, y'all. Yeah, come on, let's go have some lots of bagels. Okay. Pasta things or noodles right. or whatever y'all got. Right. Come on, right up. Hey, Daddy lives on serving food and takeout. It's the the flowers awesome. are beautiful. See why? Thank you. That's my contribution. <laughs> well, it's very nice. Yeah, Thank come you. on. Back to work now. Let's go. Are you sure you can pull this off? Am I supposed to hide in the bathroom until they leave? I can get rid of them if you want. What, I can tell Derek I'm pregnant? Not yet. Not, not now. I, just, I can't even believe it myself. <laughs> what can you believe? What's those bagels? Oh, they're good. I promise that his bark is far worse than his bite. Goodbye, sweet. <laughs> okay, so where were we? Oh, yeah, I told you I liked your hair and your nice starchy white lab coat. I learned that in interpersonal communications class. I'm making positive contact. So, now we got our little mutual respect thing going, I can ask you just how long it's going to take you to figure out why my arm is bum, and how long you're going to take to fix it. Then you just want to skip right over how you thumbed your nose at the regulations and just get right to the meat of the matter. Don't cry over spilt milk, that's my motto. How soon? What is it about you that makes you think that you can just flagrantly disobey the rules that the, the rest of us have got to live by? I am at the foggiest, so what is it going to be, one, two, three days, maybe a week? You make ridiculous demands on uh, maybe maybe i can get what i want from you if, if i say please huh doc doc no doc i'm serious just put me in the ballpark huh how soon and if you find yourself a new neurologist what you're surprised that i'm dumping you Give me a break. I, I dumped you before, and then the chief of staff of the hospital asked me to take you back. And you have been bucking to make me quit again ever since. You know, you would... You would try the patience of a sane detective, Dylan. You would. And you know what? Despite my halo and my cute little white starch jacket, I'm no saint. No sheep did, muchacha. And neither am I. But you got me pegged wrong. I ain't bucking to get you to quit. I'm trying to pin you down, trying to get some time frame here, trying to get a date on a calendar where I can write freedom in red ink. Well, you know what? The issue is an arm that refuses to work properly. It's not it's some discharge date. Oh, for crying out loud. I'm not sick. I'm not in pain. I just got a bum arm. And you're not giving me any answers well, here. If you acted like an adult for just five minutes, you might get some answers. You know what your problem is, Toots? You, you, you got t ten sheepskins paste it up on your wall, but you're clueless. What do I got to do to get through to you? What, I got to beg? Yeah, you know what? That'd be a start. And then, oh, hey, I don't know, maybe we could just move on to a more conventional method of treatment. How about that? Well, maybe Dr. Maria Santos ain't the fancy smancy neurologist she's painted herself up to be, huh? Maybe nothing's going on with my arm because you're not a good enough doctor. So when you realized she was pregnant and was going to have this baby, what'd you do next? Would you send her? We went to Phoenix. Phoenix? Why Phoenix? You didn't know anybody in Arizona. Charles knew a doctor there. 
I confided in him, him only. Oh. Well, that meant you had to take Erica out of school. What did you tell people? I told them we were going on a trip to Europe. Huh. I arranged to have postcards sent from London and Paris and... and Amsterdam while we were in Phoenix. In a small, dingy little apartment close to the hospital. It was hot. Erica was confused unhappy. She insisted that we draw the curtains day and night. Neither one of us slept very well. And Erica just shut down. She stopped talking and doing her homework. Just stared at the television. I just watched her youth and her happiness seep away. And then I went to the library and I got some books and records, but she wouldn't read or, or listen to music. The happy, outgoing little girl that I had raised was vanishing right in front of my eyes. So I took charge. You mean you got tough? The last three months of the pregnancy, I insisted that she get up every morning do her homework, and eat three sensible meals a day. That's my mona. And I told her that she was too wonderful and too special to let this destroy her. And I made a vow to both of us that we would go on and that life would be good again. You did what you have to do. Yes. Once the baby was born? I gave it up for adoption. Marrying Dimitri will be just the crowning moment of my life, as well as a very, very important moment in the life of my daughter, Bianca. Please, thank you. And so you must create the most exquisite mother-daughter mm -hmm. bridal wear that has ever been created. And of course, I know you can do that because you're a genius. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, so... <laughs> I cannot wait to see uh -huh. the sketches you brought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this your lovely daughter? Oh, no. No, no. This is uh, Kendall Hart. This is my assistant. Oh, I see. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Hi. Kendall, could you please tell Lucy that uh, Isabelle and I would enjoy some tea? Thank you so much. You know, this is my daughter, Bianca. Ah. This is the light of my life. <laughs> Isn't she adorable? Lucy? Miss Can, her guests would like their tea now, please. Thank you. Isn't it? Oh, yes. And she's even more beautiful inside than she is outside. I mean, she's just the sweetest treasure that was ever given to a mother. No. Do you have children? No, I don't. I see. Well, then you can agree with me that she is the most beautiful angel ever placed on the face of the earth. <laughs> and <laughs> the best one to show off any creation that you will make, a beautiful gown. I must tell you something. I want Bianca's dress to be every bit as beautiful and mm -hmm. as important as mine. You know, just a one-of-a-kind pièce de résistance. And, of course, you have carte blanche. I mean, money doesn't matter. Nothing is too good for my little girl. Now I have heard everything. You know what? If you don't think that I'm good enough, then you just find yourself a doctor who is. Okay, uh, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I mean it. Look, I didn't mean to insult you. I just want you to fix me. Fix you? You want me to fix you? What do you think I am? Some kind of a, a washing machine repairman? I can't just go out and order you an arm and then install it. No, I've got to figure out why the nerve damage caused by the bullet in your shoulder is not healing the way it should, and I can't. Because you can't follow directions. Are you nuts? I've been lying flat on my back in this damn bed ever since I was hit. You've poked me, you've prodded me, you forced me to drink, drink chalk, and I've been good. <laughs> All right, maybe, yeah, maybe with that technician that ran out of here. But he was too thin-skinned, and I apologize to him. Oh, for crying out loud, don't you want to get rid of me? Yes, I want to be rid of you. Yes, but I can't do that because it's impossible without your cooperation. I want to cooperate. No, I really do want to cooperate. I, it's sometimes I can't control myself. 
I feel like I'm in a cage here. I'm cut off. Not alive anymore. Which is why I need you to do me this favor. Where did you get the idea that I might owe you a favor? You don't. You don't. And, and, and last night, I, I was totally whacked out. No excuses. Me going out to, to spend the night with my wife w was totally stupid. It was. And, and I promise you, I'll never do it again. Okay? I promise you, if, if you help me. And you gotta help me. Because I need help with this. I need this back the way it was. So I can do my job. And my job, my job isn't just my job, it's me. My whole life I've been where the trouble is, ever since I went to Nam. And as a cop I go out there because there's a lot of trouble. Because I'm a guy who can handle it. But I can't handle it if I can't shoot my gun. What do you need from me? Look, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'll follow every reg right down to the fine print. I mean, you could call me in for any, any test, any torture you want to create for me. Just don't give up on me, okay? Okay, do we have a deal? It's up to you. It is either my way or no way. It's up to you. Bianca loves silk and satin. As a matter of fact, when she was a little baby, she was just attached, totally attached to this sea green cashmere blanket that was all edged in emerald satin. It was just beautiful. <laughs> As a matter of fact, her, her Christmas gown was silk. Huh? Ah, slow peaky. Oh. <laughs> well, she has exquisite taste. She really does. In fact, the last time that we went shopping together, she totally bypassed all the grunge stuff and went all by herself mm -hmm. to this most exquisite party dress, in, in, complete with red shoes. <laughs> <laughs> More tea? Oh, no, merci, chérie. And she loves dressing up. Absolutely loves it, except not in pink. Anything but no. pink. She hates pink. Uh -huh. <laughs> but she loves to look over the fashion magazines. In fact, when she was just a baby, she would sit on my lap. We would spend absolutely hours poring over the Paris collection. Do you know her first word that she ever said to me, I mean, after Mama, of mm -hmm. course, was pretty. She would say pretty. <laughs> she has a real eye for beauty. Just like your mother. Well, thank you. <laughs> we have a great deal in common. We really do. I'm so proud to say that. Do you know she's on the honor roll? She has straight A's. Really? Really? <laughs> wow. Do you think I'm bragging too much? I think you're speaking about your daughter much more than you speak about your son. <laughs> I think there's plenty of time to talk about me. Now, when can I see these sketches? Later, perhaps. Oh. Now I want to feel the mood of the stage in which my drawing are going to play to their glory. Okay. Can I see where the ceremony is going to be? Of course, I'll show you everything. Good. Uh, Kendall, you hold my calls, will you please? I think that you are just going to find out yours perfect. Well, Shelby, bye. Montgomery. May I speak to my mother, please? I'm sorry. Your mother is extremely busy right now, Bianca. I don't think she can talk now. As Erica's time grew near, she grew more difficult. She cried when I wanted her to leave the apartment. She wouldn't exercise unless I forced her to. She cried all the time.
she simply wouldn't leave the apartment. The obstetrician gave it, came there to give her her checkup. He advised counseling, but Erica put up such resistance. I, I just couldn't force her to. And so I watched my little girl fade like the Japanese lanterns at her birthday. Well, it had to be a nightmare for both of you. But you and Erica, you kept the secret. You know, Nikki, we've never spoken of it. Not to this day, to each other, ever. And except for my dear Charles, I've never told another living soul but you. Well, it certainly explains a lot about Erica. I told her to, to forget the whole thing, to wipe it out as though it had, it had never, ever happened. I prayed that the secret would stay buried forever and that she would be spared the, the pain of that memory, and I think my prayers were answered. Erica blocked it out. And I was left with a dull and rather distant ache. But, Mona, everything you've told me, all this, this has been true for years. What's happened now that, to make it different? I mean, what's changed? I think the child I gave away is here, Nikki. Is here in Pine Valley. Children will be right back. You can't be serious. Yes, Nikki, I think the little girl that Erica gave birth to is in Pine Valley. Well, how do you know? I mean, did she call you? Did she make contact? No, at first I didn't think it was so, but but then I Well, the, the day of the birth, it was a terrible ordeal. Erica was absolutely hysterical. She was in labor for hours. The doctor had to sedate her. And then hours and hours later, when the baby was born, they called me in. We had agreed in advance that Erica was not going to see the child, but I... You wanted to. Yes, I, I wanted to see her because if Erica should ever ask, which she didn't, and I... I understand. I wanted to see her. I wanted to touch her. I do understand. She was, she was a beauty, strong and healthy, screaming like a banshee. She was quite like her mother. I can still remember her little arms and her legs kicking and her birthmark. She had a little birthmark. So you actually held your granddaughter? I held her until she calmed down. And then I, I looked very deep into her eyes and I told her that I loved her. No. I handed her back to the nurse. I walked out of the nursery. I never looked back. No. No. I went into Erica's room, and when she woke up, I held her in my arms. She said, is it all over? And I said, yes. Yes, it's all over. And it was. And we went back to Pine Valley, and we never spoke of it again. Until now. And now, Nikki, I think I've looked into that child's eyes again. I've seen the birthmark. I think the little girl is here in Pine Valley. Who, who is it, Mona? I think Kendall Hart, Eric's assistant, is that 
child. Sketching in the ballroom, and she needs your notes on a floral arrangement. Oh, uh, they're right here. Right. The dresses are going to be spectacular. I sneak a peek. They are magnificent. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Have there been any calls? No. Um, it's been kind of quiet here. Well, good, good. Yvette is waiting then. Miss oh, Kate. Kendall, thank you. Thank you so much for all your work. Um, Miss Kate. Um, about what I said earlier concerning Bianca. Um, of course you know what's best for her. And I want you to know I'm really looking forward to meeting her, and I'll do anything I can to help her while she's here. Well, thank you. As a matter of fact, perhaps I am a bit extra sensitive where Bianca is concerned because she doesn't live with me. I mean, divorce is a terrible thing, but, but the thing that hurts most is, of course, not having custody. So every moment I can spend with my daughter is precious. Do you understand? Yeah. She's a very lucky little girl to have a mother like you. Who loves her so much. Well, that I do. I would do anything for Bianca. I would die for her if I had to. What I can't believe is this big surprise party. I guess you didn't know either, huh, Tom? No, I was completely in the dark, I swear. I think so. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. The place looks fantastic, Mimi. Why, thank you. you. Oh, my goodness. Well, Trevor sends his love. Right. Hey, any uh, news on this? Well, we have uh, lots of hope, no final diagnosis, yeah. but we are hopeful. That's aren't we, good, darling? that's good. Yeah, it's nice to be talked. So what are you up to over there, sweetheart? Great. Yeah, I saw you trying to get something out of Mimi, and I better not find out what it is. You imagine things, Danny. Here. Take this. Nice. Oh, man, are they all this cute? It's just, what, she's just unusual. Oh, she's unusual. <laughs> you know, my mom says when I was a baby, I had a face only a mother could love. Uh -huh. <laughs> I bet she's precious. It's just like you don't want to put her down, right? No, yeah, I never heard you talk like that. Well, you know, I'll just never forgive myself for missing out on Terrence as a baby. I mean, I met her mother when she was a little girl, you know? Call me a masochist, if you will, but uh, fatherhood is something else. Hey, maybe I'll get lucky and somebody will get pregnant for me again. I'll have a chance to be a daddy. Terrence, get a dustpan. It's okay, sweetheart. Get a towel. What is it? 